floor will be taken by Mr. Martin Picha, who has been since 2011, who has been uh, the chairman of the Agricultural Association of the Czech Republic, also member of the board of the Agrarian Chamber of the Czech Republic, and he was vice president representing Czech agriculture in the European Federation of Agricultural Organizations, COPA, COGECA, COGECA, sorry. Uh, and since 2011, he has been also vice president of the uh, Agricultural Association of Czech Republic and vice president of Confederation of Business and Entrepreneurial Associations, and also in several advisory bodies of the European Commissions, among other things, also for the Common uh, Agricultural Policy and his state. and that is European agriculture in the light of the Green Deal uh, strategy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me just remind uh, that the questions can be uh, raised only using the, the Slido system. Uh, so that is, you take the command line, sri.do slash agri2020. Uh, so I apologize so, uh, for this intervention, and I ask Mr. Uh, to start his uh, presentation. So uh, once again, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks uh, for, in for inviting me also to the Euro uh, Parliamentarian for organizing uh, this conference. I've been asked to uh, make, deliver a statement on the topic of uh, Green Deal. Uh, let me just, uh, I'd rather say Green uh, Deal uh, applying to European and Czech agriculture. Quite in the beginning, uh, to give you some short uh, summarizing information, uh, the main objective of this is uh, climate neutrality uh, till the year 2050, and there are some uh, progressive uh, objectives, reduction of uh, greenhouse gases by 2030 or, or later. And it, this is a topic which is subject to a very vivid discussion, not only with regard to agriculture, but the whole economy, because this has, uh, can have also some uh, distinct uh, repercussions on the competitive European uh, economy and also uh, European agriculture. To start with, let me give you a few figures. We must see that the G20 countries represent uh, about 81% of all of worldwide emissions of green gases, of which the EU has about a 10% share. And, and there are countries like China and the United States who, has a higher share, who have a higher share. But at the same time, we uh, should realize that uh, if you look at uh, the uh, development of the greenhouse gas uh, emissions uh, recently, between uh, 1990 and 2016, uh, we can see that uh, during that period, the uh, greenhouse gas emissions increased by 60%, and the highest increases were in countries like China, uh, India, but also uh, mem uh, countries of the Central and Eastern Africa and the European Union is part of the world uh, which has been reducing the, these emissions, uh, by, and it did so uh, by about 27% in that period. And looking at agriculture is a share of total greenhouse gas emissions by 23% uh, about. And uh, in, in the EU, uh, the share is uh, smaller by 10% roughly, and it shows that agriculture and the environment in the EU are in greater harmony uh, in, uh, than in other parts of the world. In other words, the European agriculture with regard to impacts on the overall climate change has a much smaller share than it is the case 
case in other parts of the world. If you look at recent developments, and again, uh, from 1990, the uh, farmers in the United States increased the uh, production of greenhouse gases, Brazil 67, China 20. Uh, started, uh, also 24, uh, 47, 6%, and, but uh, uh, in contrast, the EU countries reduced uh, that by about 23%. Uh, but, uh, so Europe wants to be very ambitious, and we want to be a leader in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and this is what Europe is doing. It, it is a fact today. One specific example, and that would apply to livestock production. Let us see that per one liter of produced milk in Europe, 1.3 CO2 emissions um, shares, but it's 2.4. percent in the whole so much some figures in the beginning so that we can realize the um, share of uh, European production of the CO2 emissions is quite small I don't want to say that it's not too small but we cannot save worldwide CO2 emission if even if we do not produce uh, a single gram of CO2 or methane the EU uh, strategy is reflected in some other spheres which then are uh, have um, actually reflections in the life of uh, uh, farmers it's not for only far to form but the biodiversity strategy but some action plans for circular economy uh, strategy for methane etc etc action plan for organic farming etc so uh, and it's a question of the, uh, uh, common agricultural policy, policy and also strategy for uh, rural development. Uh, let me say that when we are talking about uh, how to fulfill the uh, ambitions, uh, EU ambitions, uh, we must uh, speak uh, about how this is reflected to uh, the uh, life of uh, farmers. I have some uh, graphic uh, tables here so that we can see the individual objective, um, strategy for biodiversity, and I have a very short time, so I've selected just a few indicative, uh, but as I see it, most important uh, facts. The first objective is uh, to reduce the uh, uh, use of fertilizers in Europe by 20%. If you look at the uh, Czech Republic and countries, they are far more ahead, like uh, Ireland and, and Malta, but also uh, the large countries, uh, food producers, Germany is. You can see that the Czech Republic in comparison in Germany has about uh, half of, of, the, of the values. So the Czech uh, Republic is not, uh, has not been overusing industrial fertilizers in uh, agriculture. Culture, and we must uh, see uh, that uh, when uh, we are discussing some uh, aspects, uh, like we should reduce uh, the livestock uh, uh, headcount in order to reduce the, those emissions, and about fertility of run counter against each other and the objectives use of industrial fertilizer because if we don't use those uh, fertilizers we must use organic uh, fertilizer and of course livestock production is the best source of that but using the pesticides we must see that even the Czech Republic is one of those countries uh, that uh, are not overusing pesticides uh, we have been trying in the long run to reduce the use of pesticides in the Czech Republic, and I must say that we have been uh, successful in doing so recently. We cut up uh, consumption by 14% in comparison with some other countries. We actually have been going the, the opposite way, and we must uh, say uh, that when the European Commission is talking about the objective of reducing the uh, um, house gas emissions by 50%, so we cannot accept that those objectives spread across all uh, in the same way, not 50% for all. But some uh, countries will have to reduce much more. If you look at this table, seeing that Belgium has four times higher consumption, 
in the Czech Republic. So if in a cut by 50 percent, they will still have the double of what Czech Republic is using today. And that would not be f fair. And so we have to see the existing conditions uh, and uh, what some countries have accomplished already. And also we must see natural uh, condition and uh, sustainability of food production. I have here one uh, chart from some other presentations of mine. When we talked to uh, Mercosur, so this is a comparison between the EU, that is the green uh, line, uh, the uh, average number of use of pesticides in Europe in comparison with some other countries that we could describe as uh, developing countries, but they are agrarian-oriented oriented countries like uh, Brazil, uh, etc. And then uh, we're talking about reducing the pesticides in Europe, we must see this. And also when we talk about competitiveness of the EU. And this is uh, this shows one uh, specific uh, attempt uh, that is uh, uh, there is the um, use of uh, neonicotinoids in Europe, and so we didn't actually dress uh, like seedlings by any preparations using neonicotinoids, and so you can see yourself that in those uh, uh, frames, the the, the, the the red and yellow ones, you see the result. Uh, the fields look. Uh, much worse uh, than those fields that were treated uh, by so preparation that this is just one group of pesticides. But if, when we actually, or if we uh, prohibit the use of uh, other pesticides, it must be reflected in the total um, yields or harvests. Uh, and so there is, we see the sugar beet uh, harvested, and we are waiting uh, now uh, for the result of uh, um, evaluation of this. Uh, uh, of this test uh, and uh, similar experience um, our French colleagues uh, colleagues had uh, in France what happened is that uh, there was a jaundice uh, uh, actual spread in the sugar beet in some regions uh, there was a drop of uh, production by 30 to 50 percent and threatened significantly the existence of the production sectors of sugar beet and processing of sugar beet as such and if we approach uh, um, so other crops uh, like that it will influence very significantly future competitiveness of the EU. Uh, other, other objectives increase um, the uh, f uh, farming area. Uh, Europe has 7%, its average number, and by the year 2030 we should be able to increase that, uh, uh, that uh, percentage to 25. It's very ambitious, uh, in my opinion, because if, once you make a decision, central decision, regardless of the true uh, uh, demand on the market, uh, then it would be very dangerous. But you farmers to produce something united. And we have some experience in the Czech Republic because we have cases when uh, farmers uh, produce bio beef and are not able to uh, sell it, uh, but they must sell it as for the price of conventional beef. So, and this is reality, and when we are setting such ambitious goals, we have to realize about Czech Republic ranks fifth, uh, being 15% of uh, areas uh, in the regime of environmental friendly um, agriculture. Talking about uh, pesticides and environmental uh, friendly uh, agriculture, uh, there are various estimations of what these objectives could mean. Uh, if we um, reduce uh, the uh, pesticides use. There's an estimation that if you do not uh, do uh, protection that the yields could go down by 50 by 50 to 80 percent. It's an enormous figure. And uh, if you once you realize that you, we need a much larger area for bioproduction, then it uh, raises the question what the impact would be for the real European food production uh, of, these, uh, of these ambitions. And there's an answer, of course, we need, uh, and we need to have an exact answer for that. Uh, I'll get back to this, but the last objectives I've selected is the reduce of use of anti antibiotics. 
Uh, you can see differences between countries. Uh, I have circled also the Czech Republic, uh, which is at, at the half of what is being used, roughly. Uh, I mean, the veterinary uses in Europe. And we must see that Czech Republic tried to reduce the number of uh, antibiotics used. And we have been doing that systematically for a long time. But of course, there's a lot of work still uh, in store for us. And I'm getting uh, to a conclusion. Uh, <clears throat> let me say that what we are missing in the case of these proposals <clears throat> is a true study and impact or assessment, be it uh, green, be it green deal fund to form a biodiversity strategy, etc. Because very seriously, there's a threat here of uh, really a downfall of production in Europe, whether it's the food production, uh, loss of competitiveness, threatening of the uh, um, farmers' economy, and uh, of course, uh, eventually also decline of the living standards. And the impact uh, assessment study must be uh, worked out not only for each uh, objectives, but globally. All these strategies actually uh, are in one direction, and we must realize that when various strategies, various tools actually uh, aim at one direction, we have to see them in uh, a context, that is, see them comprehensively. If you want to reduce uh, the greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas emissions, we must know uh, the cost. Uh, and it's not only also uh, like intrinsically, not only financially. Uh, of course, there will be uh, economic impact. It's indisputable there will be high cost for agricultural production. It's indisputable uh, that the competitiveness European farmers and world markets uh, will worsen, and also that the economy, um, management, uh, and income of European farmers will go down. And we must see uh, that um, today uh, the European farmers are at the half of the average uh, income, uh, so they are not achieving even a half. And if we uh, uh, and then it will have uh, also some other uh, negative uh, impact on me. For, so uh, cut our budget for the, uh, the cap, and, and and we have ambitious goals, and we have we cut the the budget. And we must say very uh, f very bluntly that food foodstuffs will become. Uh, more expensive. Yes, this is a fact which is not very much referred to here. Food will be um, uh, less affordable. And we will have to reduce uh, uh, protectionism. Uh, the European Commission knows that actually also food on the market will have the same conditions. And the question uh, of whether some countries like the United States will be willing to accept requirements which we uh, today still, uh, still do not know whether uh, they are in harmony with WTO or not, and so whether there are actually uh, perhaps there is a threat of commercial or trade wars uh, that has been the case uh, recently. And now, if you look at these uh, red figure, these are the prices of uh, products uh, of for which farmers sell their products. And then the, the, the other curve, there is the inputs in agriculture. There is the labor cost, the raw material, etc. Uh, and you can uh, see the widening gap, uh, and which shows that clearly that um, once we, uh, or if we increase the, the cost, we will also deteriorate the economy. Uh, other possible impacts? If we reduce the size uh, of uh, area to three times for um, uh, environmentally friendly uh, agriculture, then we will need actually twice as much area uh, for the same. Uh, for biodiversity, we will have to reduce the production uh, of standard uh, food, food stuff, and Europe will cease to be the leader in this respect, and we must say that, and we have addressed our, some of our specialized unions, and in the case of uh, uh, environmental friendly uh, areas, uh, the actual income is at the level of environmental uh, actual agriculture. But we want, if we add some other something, add so actually this will lead. Um, 
to a drop of production, even higher drop of production, but we at the same time prohibit the use of pesticides to protect plants, and at the same time uh, limit the use of fertilizers, it will have thrice, uh, three times as high impact on uh, food production in Europe, and the Commission should relevantly and correctly uh, tell us uh, by how much uh, food production in Europe will be reduced and what actually the, uh, the true uh, impact will be on uh, food prices. And so what will be uh, actually the real uh, impact? So I'd like to say that we are in a situation that uh, applying all this and our expectation is potential environmental uh, impact on uh, worldwide and global climate. So it's a, it's a question whether it would be so or not. So Europe sometimes behave uh, actually as um, a two, uh, two wise uh, uh, entity. Uh, oh, and uh, we have some. I've chosen example from first uh, between 1990 to 2014. Uh, the European forests uh, were enlarged by 13 percent, and uh, 11 million hectares were deforested, uh, primarily virgin forests in Brazil and other parts of the world, because that production should be substituted for the European one. And the demand uh, for food in Europe is constant, but it is growing in the whole world, so world demand will not uh, go down uh, by any means. So it's not possible to expect that we will be able to feed the, this planet's production if we uh, reduce the, the uh, number of uh, production. Then if Europe uh, reduces its production, uh, some, there will be someone else to, to substitute. To, to the, and of course, if it, they have to create the, the area on which the production will be made. So all together, it means that we will actually transfer problem to countries like uh, Brazil and Argentina, where there are actual rainforests which will have to be uh, fell or cut so that foodstuffs can be produced. And if we are not able to uh, 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 like uh, get rid of uh, waste, uh, uh, and uh, food, food stuff is a very complex objectives and the United Nations has been trying to achieve this for long years. Uh, and uh, let me use one argument which supports what I'm saying. And this is Humboldt University data which said that if we produce uh, uh, European production by one single percent, it means it mean that we will actually reduce uh, the imports uh, of foodstuff from virtual agriculture. So this is 1.5 million hectares from third world countries. And at the same time, it means that at the time we uh, re uh, worsen productivity, then we will increase CO2 emissions by 220 tons in the global uh, terms, and it will mean also uh, additional cutting of uh, the rainforests uh, and uh, worsening the economy for agriculture uh, for, for farmers. And one last thing, we are uh, living at paradoxical times, and the European Commission during a few months was able to define very ambitious goals in the field of agriculture. I've mentioned some of them, but there are many more of them. But so far, we have not seen one single study of impact assessment that would indicate what this will bring about. Paradoxically enough, the United States, about two weeks ago, uh, published their own estimations of application of uh, farm-to-fork um, uh, farm strategy and biodiversity strategy for the European agriculture. It has options, of course. But basically, the United States and the Department of Agriculture uh, say that it will uh, mean a uh, reduction of uh, agricultural production by 12 to 15 percent, increasing of price by 17 percent, increase of imports uh, of uh, imports to of foodstuff to Europe, and uh, re reducing the gross salaries of uh, uh, farmers by about. Uh, uh, 60, 16 percent, and these are actually quite uh, still uh, moderate numbers because it, they do not encounter all the other aspects. They're reducing the budget for common agricultural policy, but also impacts of some other strategies uh, on farmers. 
so in the very conclusion is I'm convinced uh, that uh, uh, if the European uh, farmers are supposed to uh, contribute to reducing CO2 emissions, so let's say that these um, European farmers are the first ones to face the, uh, climate problems if there are droughts, uh, not sufficient rainfall, so the farmers, of course, are the face. Uh, uh, the first ones to face this challenge. And so if we have such expectations for farmers, we need to know uh, what uh, the true impacts of the plant uh, tools will be and whether the tools will really uh, meet uh, uh, the expectations. I am afraid that uh, very ambitious, and in many cases, uh, they actually lead to high uh, nervousness on part of uh, farms. And let's put it straight, actually, they run, uh, run country uh, one another, so there's no logic in them. And if the farmers actually uh, um, uh, actually want to uh, refer to this, they, they are not heard well. So we must say uh, uh, whether yes, whether such objectives should be as they are, and or whether they should be rationalized. We should say uh, what the tools should be actually toward these aims, and also tell the society the costs, because it will enormous cost, of course, uh, in the form of uh, food prices or taxes, and also so it will have uh, impact on the overall um, agriculture and food production in Europe. And it's not possible to uh, prove such things without uh, the society really knowing these impacts. I apologize, I may have been longer, but uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'm ready to answer your questions. And now let us have questions that we have received now. And let me put here one question to Mr. Picha, and he was uh, speaking about the fact that the impact assessment studies uh, which means that it, we can't say exactly uh, uh, what will happen if the uh, set uh, objectives uh, will be achieved. And I'd like also to know whether some specific risks are taken into account with regards to pesticides, uh, fertilizers, or uh, antibiotics. And, these are risks uh, uh, to uh, the health condition of people and also to biodiversity, uh, where the risks are only, let's say, uh, uh, supposed or presupposed uh, on that basis the, the respective objectives are set. So with regard to pesticide as such, uh, uh, there's been such an atmosphere created that chemis chemistry in agriculture is bad in all respect, but it's quite misleading uh, because nobody has uh, doubts uh, that as inhabitants we need, as population, uh, we need uh, drugs. Uh, if I'm ill, go to pharmacy, buy uh, medicaments, uh, also chemistry. Uh, on the basis of some doctor's prescription. But uh, we need actually medicaments, like plants also do. And they also, uh, and we need to also cure plants. And if you don't cure plants, and plants have many illnesses, uh, and uh, so if we just reduce that to a very limited number, then there will uh, be a resistance uh, to uh, some medical preparations, like we people have some resistance against antibiotics. And we will be getting to a situation when we say we will produce food foodstuffs with, uh, without the use of any chemistry. And nothing happens. But it's not true. We are in a situation that if we do not uh, treat uh, plants, the plants will not produce, uh, make the foodstuffs, and we will have nothing to eat. In clear context, and, uh, if, and there are some things like impacts on uh, health in impacts, of course, if we tobacco uh, healthy uh, environment quality of water, and if we overuse pesticides, it means that um, 
if we don't set any limits uh, or use them you, uh, actually excessively, then have uh, negative implications. But if, then if we uh, don't use drugs uh, for the pesticides for the plants, uh, the result can be quite contrary because a plant can be ill. And an ill plant means uh, an ill food or not healthy food uh, for the people. And of course, we see such problems also in an an ecological agriculture if one do not do uh, do not use actually anything for the protection of plants. There can be molds, and if we eat uh, foods uh, with molds, then it will have impacts on our health and on, uh, on the human environment. So we must say that we uh, are you know, realize that we are in a situation that, that uh, actually we can't say black black or black and white or black or white. The chemistry is bad in agriculture. Uh, well, this is what I hear. Uh, what, what we heard here in the beginning, somebody says we have to actually eliminate chemistry uh, in agriculture. That's like saying uh, we will abandon using drugs and medicaments, uh, human medicaments. And that would be like in the Middle Ages, we would be just using herbs. Uh, and so it's quite the same approach like uh, in, in agriculture, irrational approach. And it can be expressed only by someone uh, who doesn't know anything about agriculture. Uh, next question, please. Uh, we can say uh, that the Green Deal is benefit. Uh, or it is a question, can we say the Green Deal is in, in uh, harmony with the difficulties uh, which uh, uh, will be in agriculture? I think that the expectations are set too high. I talked about the share of European agriculture with regard to greenhouse gas chemicals in total emissions, but we have mentioned that uh, farmers also significantly influence also the sequestration of carbon. And so uh, there are studies showing uh, that farmers are actually are positive in the overall balance, so uh, more carbon if they uh, do proper uh, food management. So, and so, like Mr. Yandisek said, uh, it is connected with food. And so if they uh, actually have a proper business, proper operations, then they reduce the emissions in because they then make the soil uh, sequestration. And so they deposit uh, in, in, in soil. So I dare say that some of the expectations that we are here that agriculture will be actually emissionless is something that we are fulfilling today by depositing, soil depositing. And so if you don't do that, we could actually talk about what needs to be done. But some of those proposals seems to be extremely dangerous because, in my opinion, they do not take into account uh, uh, the uh, agricultural uh, approaches and uh, something is missing. And there is the loss of, of trust on part of uh, farmers in political leaders. If you say you need to cut the uh, uh, stock numbers in order to reduce CO2 emissions, and at the same time say that we have a good condition of soil, uh, and, and by uh, reduce uh, pesticide, but still have uh, actually good quality of soil, but, and then keep uh, the animals, uh, in, uh, etc. So uh, that actually is contrary. These things are run, run counter to one another. And um, the Commission says, on one hand, let's reduce uh, emission, of, and then they uh, actually reject a genetically modified uh, food, which enable to reduce the uh, amount of uh, uh, pesticides used, and I could I have uh, many examples uh, of that. Uh, that actually, the people deciding about uh, actually deciding about agricultural policies uh, lose uh, uh, actually are not no longer believed by agriculturists. But so it, there must be a feeling that uh, this makes sense. And. But if somebody actually uh, dictates some uh, invented uh, Trump uh, out, uh, like uh, objectives to agriculture, to farmers, that would be far more greater danger. Thank you for uh, the answers.